All right. So I'll talk through the solution to this breakout, which is up on the agenda right now. Um, we'll probably just do this pretty quickly, and I'd be happy to answer more questions afterwards so we can move on with the rest of the lecture. And now I will be louder. Awesome. OK, so in this notebook, first thing I do is import PyLab. Uh, I already imported it, so sorry about that weirdness there. That's just so I have numpy and plot in my path. This first example is just the non-object oriented way you would calculate the perimeter for um, a polygon. So this is a function that we don't want you to write, but it's just up here for example. Um, it takes in a list of vertices and then uh, returns the... Can make it a little bit bigger? Yes, absolutely. Is that better? Yeah. And then returns the um, perimeter. So, for example, a square with sides of length one is actually has a parameter of four, so that makes sense. Um, I won't go through that one because we don't need to. It's just proving that it works for a more complex shape as well. So here's what we really wanted you to build, something like this. This is the object-oriented approach. There's a class called Polygon, and it has an init function, which accepts a list of vertices. And this one has a name, too, just because it seemed like a good thing to have. Um, and here, the first thing we do is we take the arguments to this init function and put them in as self dot blank. Uh, variables so that these variables will now be accessible to any other method of this class for this instance of class. Um, and then we have this function here which takes the self.vertices variable and uses it to calculate the perimeter and it returns that perimeter. I also have a little function here which plots the polygon just calculate the perimeter for it just so we can see what it looks like. So here in this cell, we have these vertices as a list of coordinates. Um, and I couldn't visualize what that was at first, so that's why I put that plot me function in there. But if we run this, uh, it defines that list of vertices. It creates a polygon with those vertices as um, the first argument here. And you'll notice I don't give it a name, so its default name will be poly. And then I calculate the perimeter for A, whose name is poly. So creates an instance of the class polygon, like it says to right there, and calculates the perimeter, which is 17.3 blah, blah, blah. And now we can do some other things as well, right? So we can see what A.name is. It's poly, like it should be. And let's see what it looks like if we plot it. So this plot me again uses those self dot vertices variables. Um, you notice the first thing I do, just so this doesn't confuse anyone, is I append the first item back on the end so that it draws a circle all the way back, and not a circle, a polygon that closes all the holes um, and goes back to the beginning point. So if we run that, put that right there, that's the polygon with side length of 17.35, blah, blah, blah. Any quick questions? Or slow questions? Yes? So that's just, um, if I don't include an argument here, A will be a polygon with no sides and no points which means it'll kind of be nothing. Um, that's just a default argument, which you're right, in this case is pretty much useless. Um, I could set those to a default like a square, and then if I didn't include a vertices argument, it would default to that. But in this case, this is not very informative. If you need type checking, you have to explicitly do that. So you could say right afterwards, if um, vertices uh, is of type list, is instance list, right? Then you could go on. If not, you could set something else that says this is not a valid, you could print out this is not a valid thing and then tear yourself down. Throw an exception. Yeah? 
that would be a good example of saying my polygon exception is a, a class that you're creating, and then you raise that exception. Anyone else? 